So this is the fourth part of the steering intro series 2019 in which we are going to add these agents that follow the main AI or the uh, controllable AI with a little offset. So you can see they queue up nicely, they don't come stack up right on our Arrive2 character. We are going to work on that. So starting back from the previous part, links in the description, we are going to add back our follow character to the game scene. I had removed it to make it a bit easier to control our character arrive because the follow AI still follows the mouse cursor. So we're going to head back to the character follow.gd script. I'm going to close the other tabs so that we can focus on this one. We're going to do this. We're going to add a new unready variable at the top and let's call it target. We are going to store a target. This one we can't add just yet, so we are going to just add the variable because we need a little extra. We need a target path to find the node to follow. So we are going to use an exported variable for that. We are going to put it above our max speed as a new exported variable. Let's call it target path, and we're going to use a node path variable this time around. Node path. This is a type that allows you to choose a path to another node in the editor. So if I go back to my character follow, in the inspector, we can now assign a node to the target path variable. We're going to choose character arrive to, and this will become our target. So now look at this. We are going to set the target to get node and you can use the target path here. Now even though this line is above our target path, this unready variable is going to be executed after what is here. These are going to be executed or set on the object's constructor on the init callback here. And the onReady keyword makes it so a variable gets set when the node is ready, that is right before Godot calls the ready method here. This is what's happening. So now the reason why we are putting these above those is our style guide at GDQuest. We put what we call node dependencies at the top of the script. These are the nodes that we get and that we use throughout this class. And this is very important information when you are working as a team. Now we need to add some code to follow the main character. But first we are going to export an extra variable right after our target path. It's going to be an offset value. So let's call it follow offset and let's say 100 pixels. We are going to use that to make sure that our follow AI doesn't stack up with our character but follows it at a distance. Now let us follow the target. We are going to change the part where we were getting the global mouse position to target.globalPosition. The thing is the target might be the node itself. You know, what if you don't set the target path here? What if in the inspector, the target path is not pointing to character arrive to, but it's empty. In that case, you want to safeguard the method. You could do it like that. If the target is self, we are going to set physics process to false, like so. Why check for target is self? Well, if you don't set the target path, the default node path is the node itself. It's going to point to that character follow. So you are going to get the node in the target variable. It's just going to return self, or it's just going to be this node itself, this instance. This is why we have to do that. From there, we are going to not follow that target global position directly. 
Instead, we have to follow it at a distance. To do so, we are going to add a few variables. So first, we need a variable that is going to store the distance to the target, like so. Let's call it to target. I'm going to add the type hint, and it's the distance from this node's position, the follow agent, to the target's global position. Up until now, we were calculating that distance in if statement below. We're going to reuse that variable, so that's why we have to wrap it there to store it in a variable. And this time, we are going to use the arrive to steering behavior. So we're going to change our distance threshold to the arrive, let's name it arrive threshold, for example, like on the other character. And we are going to change its value at the top of the script. So going back, no, it's three pixels, so that's fine. Then we want to change the steering here to arrive to, so it's a bit smoother. So we are doing the same thing we did two videos ago. And we have to pass in, after the max speed, we have to pass in a distance radius. So we could do something like 200, like the other character. And the last parameter was, let me check, slow radius and the mass. And the mass can be the default one, or we can make it a bit slower than the main AI that has a mass of 10. So now, before you try the game, make sure that you have your target path. And if that is the case, you will see the follow AI will move to the position of your leader here, right? It tends to stack on top of the other character and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'll move down the view a little bit. Now we have to add a new variable to store the position that we are going to follow behind the target, the leader. We are going to create a new variable called follow global position. We want it to be a position 100 pixels or the offset distance before the leader. You can calculate it like that. You take the target's global position and to it you are going to subtract, you take the direction to the character itself to this agent multiplied by the follow offset. So here in parentheses, we are taking a vector that points from the agent to the leader. We subtract this node's global position to the target's global position. Normalize it, that gives us a direction vector multiplied by the follow offset. Now we have to replace the target global position here by our follow global position. And if you try the game, you'll see that something a little weird is going to happen. You will have the character move back and forth. It's going to try to go back after getting close enough to the target. So now we have to add a condition to that. So I'm going to wrap this statement in parentheses. This is one trick you can use to make a long statement to break it down on several lines. GDScript is going to read everything that's in parentheses as one line, kind of. So we can use an if-else statement in there. So we want to have this location as our target only if the distance to the target is greater than our follow offset. Because if we are too close to the target, if the AI overshoots a little bit, you can see that it goes back and we don't want that to happen. So otherwise, if you are close enough to the target, the node is going to target its own position, allowing it to stabilize behind the AI. Now, one thing that we have is the follow offset might be a little too small. It's 100 pixels right now. If we add a larger value, you'll see that the AI is only going to start to follow if the leader is far enough, right? Otherwise, as you stay close, it's not going to move and it's going to 
reach a point that is behind the target AI it's following. So with that, if you want to have more characters following one another, you add a new character follow, you make it point to the previous one, and we can add as many as you want, and each can be set up a little differently from the other. But now they are all following one another with some delay. And you can tweak the parameters, the mass of the characters, those kinds of things to make them a bit more reactive. The follow offset is a bit big as well. But that is your assignment for this tutorial. You see, we have a fixed mass and uh, arrive radius on our agents. Your goal is to make it editable in the editor, in the inspector here, like our follow offset and max speed. We are going to do one last thing for good measure to pimp up the game a little bit. On our character arrive, we are going to add a camera 2D. To make it active, we have to check the current value in the inspector, and we are going to add a bit of smoothing on the camera. I'll lower the value, so the lower the smoothing speed, the slower the camera will arrive to the target location. A value of 2 or 3 is pretty smooth, and we want to deactivate the drag margin properties that are kind of a frame that will make the camera not move unless the AI reaches the end of the frame. So we don't want that to happen. Now you can try the game again and see, as we had set up a parallax layer for you, how the camera moves and gives you a bit of depth with the background, giving you an effect a bit like the game Flow, if you've played it. With that, we reach the end of the series for now. If you have any questions, suggestions, tips, please share them in the comments below. If you want to learn more, you can find links in the description to our free platform game series and to the courses that we sell and that make the channel live, that allow us to create all that free content. If you want to go further, they contain more advanced tutorials and professional techniques. But that said, I want to thank you kindly for watching for the time being. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.